line and I'm sure it's only going to last for a second. So I'm going to set it out up under this tree. I'm going to probably hunt off the ground again over that same little bush hogged field that we hunted a couple days ago. We saw the does in. The wind was good for it again. It's a really hard to access spot, so I'm hoping that these deer have been pushed back in here. Just as the rain stopped, I'm still getting situated. A bunch of turkeys come out of the end of the little field there. Started feeding straight to me, so I had to kind of rush because I didn't want to bump them and get them all boogery and raising cane. So I quickly threw some face paint on them. Got everything situated real quick, and they came up right here like 15 yards, and then they walked right beside me here. So I've been situated now for probably 40, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Well, nothing, not a single deer. Got really nice wind noise and a good consistent wind. So, maybe that works out in our favor. something more fun like <laughs> go do something more fun like I don't know watch grass grow or something well Welcome back to Kentucky. We have uh, been at home for the last few days and big cool front just come through actually yesterday. Um, I would have loved to have been here yesterday and tried to be here yesterday, but it just responsibilities got in the way, but we're here today. Um, made the drive back up, just pulling in. We should have time to go get in the tree for the evening sit. We're going to uh, 
going to go to a place that I scouted before I left a week ago. Um, the bachelor group of bucks that I saw the first evening I hunted, which was now like over two weeks ago. Um, I was trying not to push in on them. I was trying to be reserved. And then we got the pressure situation. And then I just went rogue and kind of hunted all over the place. Off prior knowledge, off map scouting, off whatever. Um, then the last two days I was here last week, I just got frustrated. I could, wasn't hunting good because I didn't have any confidence. I said, I've got to put my boots on the ground. I've got to look for some stuff. I've got to get some confidence so that I'll start hunting good again. So I did, I went to walking. And finally, I just decided I'm gonna go in there and try to find where the bachelor group of bucks was bedded. Probably blow them out of there. They're probably already gone. That summer pattern is probably over uh, for the season, but at least I'll know for the future. Um, and that's exactly what I did. I went in there, I had some ideas on where they might be bedded. I went and prodded around. The very last one I checked is where they were bedded, no doubt about it. I haven't been able to find hardly any buck sign no no rubs um very little of anything really um come in and on this on this spot it's like a little ridge point that comes out there's some thick cover there and that's where the bucks were bedded and there were some pretty fresh beds i circled up wind of it before i went in there to try to just uh try to just uh, let my wind blow across the kind of wind bump the deer out of there so that I hopefully wouldn't just like overly startle them. Just kind of maybe a gentle nudge. I felt like that was better than just walking in on them if they were there in their bed still, which I doubted. But anyway, just to be safe, I did that. Got there, the beds, you know, they look really fresh. And around those beds was probably a dozen fresh rubs. So I felt like for sure that's where that bachelor group of bucks, a couple hundred yards, maybe even a few hundred yards off the bean field that I saw them in. Um, what I'm going to do now is go into that spot. I'm gonna go hunt it like the deer bedded there. Doubtful that they are, considering that we're almost into October. Those summer patterns should be well on their way. The beans are turning, the corn's coming out, everything's kind of changing. But um, that's what we're going to do anyway. That's kind of what we're, what we're going for, so. deep little ravine right here and walk it down. These fingers all go down and kind of taper out. The deer were bedded on the next one over at the end of it. So there's going to be them bedded, a little narrow bottom, this one, and then this narrow bottom. I'm going to go down this one and try to slip up the back side of the, of the finger ridge that's adjacent to the one they're bedded on and uh, try to get into position for them to come out of the bed and I found where they were crossing the end of this one. Um, and uh, we'll see if, uh, if this grand plan works out. Where I'm going to be is up here 100 yards. The wind, as you saw, was doing little funny stuff. Just a little bit of back and forth. I stopped to check it with old Trusty here. I just jumped a deer right there. I'm, like I said, I was about 125 yards from where I want to be. Let's just ease on down. Kind of critique our setup as far as the wind goes a little bit closer to the actual spot, and then we'll uh, try to get up a tree. Switch a little bit, a little backdraft that would pull it down in this bottom behind me. I thought 
something wind should be more consistent and that shit is blowing straight southeast I mean could be no more in the wrong direction I mean look at this crap I mean the deer's bed is right there they're gonna walk that way and a deer just blew I ain't been up here 30 minutes 45 minutes and a deer just blew down here 100 yards you don't get this close to a buck's bedroom and have a deer blow at you right over there and then it go well though. come in right at the last last minute there and they came from opposite the way I expected them to come which explains why they were able to get to us without winding us I didn't do anything but pout up here all evening for the most part but hopefully we didn't ruin this spot maybe it's uh, not a complete disaster Top of the morning to you fellers. I don't know if you can see me or not. We are uh, getting us a quick cup of coffee here on the deck of the boat and fixing to launch off once we have a little caffeine and uh, go get in a tree somewhere. It feels like deer season. It's like 50, I think I said 55 degrees in the truck this morning. Like I said, we'll have us a cup 
and uh, we're gonna drop this boat in the water we're gonna go a little spot uh, I've got a tree that I found when I was doing a little walking I ain't got a clue if we're gonna see nothing but at least it feels like deer season fog's pretty rough this morning so it's been a, kind of a slow go just having to pay attention you can't really use a spotlight because all you see is fog so you just kind of got to go with your night vision so been a little tricky this boat out there situated here I'll give you guys a look around once it brightens up just a little bit it's just uh just getting to where you can shoot here up under us in the woods and we're sitting right on top of the creek and uh kind of in a spot where there's a, a real thick patch of uh, maples and just a bunch of high stem count stuff and I think these deer are bedding in or I assume or I know they're bedding in some of it, but it's just huge. So, what you have is it comes to a corner right here in front of us. Um, I've got one little hole where I can shoot right to the corner of it. About 30 yards over here to our left are, are two persimmon trees. When I check them, that would have been Sunday, today's Friday, so not quite a week ago. They were starting to drop, and it looked like some deer were hitting them. There were some droppings and stuff under them. I actually saw two does up under them, so yeah, we got a persimmon tree right next to bedding, so I'm hoping it may be anything bedding in here maybe stops by before it goes to bed, or it's already bedded, and it gets up and uh, kind of comes out for a snack, you know, a little after daylight. Also, in the strip of timber that runs the creek here, I found a few, like, uh, red oaks that were dropping. So, just a few acres were on the ground. So, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is there's a couple different food sources that should be available to them right here. Um, now we're going to sit right here for a little bit and see if some comes snack. five after seven on September 24th and I think I just smoked a pretty good Denmore big chocolate orange joker um everything just happened so fast I think I mean I think I ate him good I think I ate him good I didn't hear him fall though, so. I'm 
just sitting here, I look up over, I mean right here, and I see a deer, and I see it's a buck, I said, man, that's a buck, I'm, how good is he? And I got my binos on him, I said, he's plenty good enough, for sure. And he walked by this hole on my bad side, and I was just like, I watched him walk, got everything situated, watched him walk right here at 22. I wish I would have tucked it just a little bit lower, but... I mean, he, he came exactly where I wanted him to come to, so if I didn't kill him, it was all my fault, but I think I saw that arrow go just right. I mean, I think I saw it go just right. I just didn't hear the deer fall. I heard him bounce down this roadway. I mean, I say roadway. It's like a tall little grassy strip. Got out there, and I heard some, something caused the squirrels to go crazy over there, but I, did, I didn't hear him tumble and crash or anything, so. It happened so fast, I didn't even have time to get jacked up. It's just now that it's, God, I pray that I didn't hit that deer too high. I could have swore I, I saw the arrow hit, like the top, not right behind the shoulder, but maybe like upper third of the deer, not like extremely high, but could have been a little lower, but I'm at like 22, 23 yards. I mean, the angle would be in my favor in that situation. Trying to stay class half full as much as I cry and complain and whine when it comes to deer hunting. Just try to keep going, essentially, and just try to be smart about it. Complete honesty right now. Complete honesty. When I was scouting a couple few days ago, I popped up right here. I mean, the boat, you can see the boat. The boat's about 50, 60 yards here. And uh, I popped up right here to come look all this over and found this persimmon tree and there was two does standing under it. it. Looked like the does had been hitting it. I was here to shoot a doe. I mean, I knew that this thick bedding in the corner that I had right here is the reason I climbed this tree instead of climbing directly over the persimmon is because when I looked at this the other week, there was a lane, it was kind of a hole that I could shoot straight to the edge of the thick stuff. And um, that's why I wanted to climb this tree. And I knew that that thick stuff, that these bugs or deer, should probably be, it kind of, this thick stuff kind of has a neck right here and these deer could slip into that that neck and literally be consumed with thick cover so nothing could get to them, but they wouldn't have to walk so far through that thick crap to, to get security essentially. And he'd come up, I looked up and he'd come up out of this, out of this bottom, I guess. I guess he'd come out of that. I just looked up and kind of saw deer and he walked by me here at probably See, that was 35, probably walked by me at 40 right here. And I got a hole right there, and that's where I put my glasses on him. I said, yeah, he's, he's definitely, it was a no-doubter. But that way, I, I knew I was shooting him. And then he came in to the thick stuff, and I said, please let that deer come this way down that. I could tell he was kind of angling this way. I said, please let that deer turn and come down this little uh, grassy strip on the outside of that thick stuff instead of just diving straight into the thick stuff. And... Sure enough, he did. I mean, couldn't have, couldn't have, couldn't have been standing in a more perfect spot for me to shoot him. I'm guessing that he was probably gonna snack on him a persimmon before he went went to bed this morning. It's been an hour and four minutes, the longest hour and four minutes ever. So, the plan is now that I am going to come down this tree. You can see around me, even though I'm in the shade, you can see around me that the sun's out now. I'm going to slide down this tree, making as little noise as possible. I'm going to go right to the boat, which is right behind us. So I'm going to ease out, go back to the truck, put the footage on the screen, double check the hit since we have that luxury, and um, 
decide what to do from there. I hope. Um, we get there and the hit's what I think it was and we're just going to come right back over here and find him laying just right over there. Truck. Please, Jesus, let this be a good hit on this deer. He's dead. Oh, he's dead. He is. <laughs> he can be bulletproof and he ain't toting that one. Let's go find him. So it's been two hours and 20 minutes since we shot the deer. Reviewed the footage, looks great. Right, right in the pocket, right behind the shoulder. Good angle, everything should be great. So we're back. Keep our fingers crossed, everything continues to go as planned. Arrow's gotta be here somewhere in this tall grass. And I quit looking for the arrow and just started easing down here. Shot the deer about 15 yards there and we're already picking up some blood here. And blood here, you can see it on there, there. So I'm gonna step off to the side of it and just keep easing down. Blood there, blood all over this stuff. Looks like he's on the outside edge of this stuff. You can see it. Right there on that one. That big spot on that one, I'll say that. Blood kind of looks dark. But I think it's because it's bottom on this grass which is extremely wet. Blood on this stuff here. I see a limb leaves up there about 15 20 yards is covered in blood. He obviously took off through the woods here. Because he hit every one of these dang trees on the way through. Which way did you go from here? We got you here. Oh, we found him. What would be a good story without a little bit of suspense, eh? He went up right up there and just did something funny. God, what a body. Not bad, not bad at all. I was 30 yards from him the whole time when I lost blood. He just turned immediately left and was going to the, to the creek. I'll be honest, I cut the camera off for a second to admire him for myself. A moment of silence, I guess you can say. But now it's y'all's turn. To 
just the beauty. I and mean, body size on this deer is giant. His neck's already starting to swell up. You can tell, even in September. Yeah, he's come out of his chest. Uh, this is what he's sporting. Oh, plenty for me. He's palmated real crazy on this one. Really thick all the way up. He holds his mass all the way to the end. Pretty thick all the way down at the bottom. And carries it all the way up. There's two things, there's several things that's gotta happen now. I've got to uh, get some pictures with this buddy. And I gotta call him in. Which I don't know if I'll be able to do without phone service. And then I've also got to go back there and find that area. But we got to get started on the pictures because the flies are starting to even. Even though it's a cooler day, flies are starting to accumulate. So let's get busy. Thank you, Jesus.